Hey everyone, welcome back to the Outdoor Cruise. It has been a while. Sorry, it's a kind of a slow time of the year for me for content, but tonight, tonight we got something special. It's called smelt fishing, and Duluth has some of the finest, and I'm about ready to head up with a, a bunch of guys that, uh, they're, eh, it's probably their second year, but it's, it's gonna be a good, it's gonna be a good time. Low light, it's gonna be tough. I'm gonna do the best filming I can. We're not after a whole bunch. But as you can see right there, I've got some buckets, a cooler, and a special cooler. Um, I have some some guys from my work that are <laughs> going to be the major stakeholders in this one that uh, are doing the bulk of the work. They're younger. They're they're in better shape than the fat guy of Outdoor Cruise. So stay tuned. Next video, hopefully, we'll be sitting on the beach up at Duluth and Park Point. Okay, we've made it to Duluth. Time to smelt where A B of the fat guys uh outdoors club. So <laughs> fat old guys outdoors. <laughs> fat old guys outdoors, okay. So as you can see in the background we got a sunset. We're pretty early, probably the earliest I've ever been before. We are up here in Park Point. We sent our scout up there. We've got some pretty good reports of some smelt here. I don't know what they're really scouting other than we're going to go out there and... Less walking for me. Scouting a really, shorter path. Really, we're just... I got some buckets in here. <laughs> we're just going to go sit on the buckets and watch these other guys <laughs> smelt. Then we're going to get a bunch of smelt and we're going to eat them and get fatter. So, all right. No, we're having a blast. This is going to be awesome. Like you see, there's some people back there. They're all walking the beach right now. It's a beautiful day. The temps are good. Let's see what happens. We got some good reports. This is spot number one. Is that a thumbs up, Jack? Yep. That's what I thought. See, that's I, I wouldn't let you down like that. Right? Right? Fat guys don't let you down. We don't take any extra steps than we have to. Okay, so. <laughs> or extra pulls. The, the true workers will be back soon. Oh, here they are right now. Okay. All right. We'll see you when we get on the beach. Jack, right back around a little bit here you go we're getting ready right there some big buckets jack's getting waders on workhorse jack workhorse brett yep. brett's not gonna get suckered in by waves fat guy one <laughs> fat guy number two a little cooler in there with some bush lattes oh, yeah oh hey there it is right there there's our net. We're using a, uh, some of the gear, obviously, some of the gear that you need. You don't need a whole lot out here, but <clears throat> if you truly want to be successful, this is a Duluth net. Jack, you bought that right here out of Duluth? Yup, delivered to my door. Delivered to your door, and it's got to be... 25 two, feet by 4 feet. 25 feet is the max length in the state of Minnesota, correct? Yup. So the reason these work better, they have a pocket in them. So when you drag them, the smelt go into the pocket. If you use a frayable net, they will, will not just, get anything. Nope, they'll hit the sides, from they'll experience. move out. Yep. Jack tried that his first year, was not very successful. I will say thank you Domino Dave for showing me a lot of the, the front end of it. So, all right, here we go. It is a gorgeous night, look at that. It is, beautiful sunset, it is gorgeous. So we're going to get out there, stake some ground, and uh, I'll give you another shot when we get there, when we get the gear down. All right. Lots of people enjoying the, the sunset right now. Net set up. Got good, good prime position here. Um, let's hope. We got some guys starting to pull down here. Down on the end, yeah, up there. Some neighbors over here, looking good over here. Let's 
See what they got cooking. How's it going, guys? Little, little outdoor cruise, little YouTube thing I got going here. Hopefully, we get some smell tonight. Hopefully. Yeah. Outdoor cruise. What's your channel? Outdoor cruise. Outdoor cruise. Yep. Hey, so, hey, you guys, hey. you guys smelt last night at all? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Pretty good. All right. Uh, so so. We so, came so, too late. So. Yeah. So, How late so. did you come? Uh, we're ten thirty. Got here about ten. Yeah. God, I heard some like some guys did pretty good down here. Two, yeah. We Between didn't do good. <laughs> nine and midnight, nothing, nothing. Yeah, really we always catch No, we caught we got some, but we got too many coronas. No, not too much. Not too much corona. Not enough. All right, everyone, we're going to talk about it, this Duluth net. Again, we're going to, here's the, what makes this net so important? One, you, when you buy it, you get just the net, and you have to add some of these poles to it right here. There's a back brace idea to it. We'll cover that in a little bit. But here's what makes this thing the schnizzle. Beyond buying a regular, uh, Get in the water here a little bit. Frable net. It's got a pocket to it. Okay? So when the fish come from this side or that side, they all funnel down to the center and they fall into that pocket right there. Okay? And people say, oh, that's that's not that important. You wouldn't believe how important that is. You can sit out here and sane and get 10, 12 fish, 10, 12 fish, 10, 12 fish. And all of a sudden, you start using a real net like this, and it's got the floaters on top, and pretty soon you're pulling a half gallon, gallon, five gallons. I mean, you're you're doing a straight pull with it. Again, I'm gonna have Jack pick up this pole quick. You pick that pole up. So the pole is very, very beneficial. You gotta keep it dragging on the bottom. Yep. So if Jack was to be pulling, he'd be walking backwards. Other way. Well, I was. Oh, that okay. Way, yeah. Either or. Yep. And you're literally gonna drag that on the ground, dragging it, dragging it, dragging it, dragging it. There you go. That's exactly what you want to do out there. And again, I've seen the other ones that I've used. There's a strap. They'll, they'll run a rope from the top around here down to the bottom. And when they get out there, they'll step. They step through it. Put it over there just like a gun sling and they walk backwards with it that way you're using your back instead of your arms to pull it again we're not we're not after you know tons and millions we're after i don't know a couple five gallons that's about that's about it but that's the net we're using stay tuned it's getting close all right, guys. Here's a little. Here's a little smelting tutorial. We're just gonna do a quick run because it's light out and I can get good footage. There are some people pulling down here. Beautiful, beautiful, Hi. beautiful. All right. You want to walk out in a single file line, okay? Because then you're not you're not scaring fish away. All right. So the tallest guy goes out first. The shortest guy goes out second. And you're gonna go straight out. You don't want to carry it completely horizontal because then you're scaring fish away. So they're going to go out until the shortest guy says, I'm deep enough. So we're going to watch Brett and Jack. We'll see a little brotherly love right there. Again, the other thing, when you're going out, have headlamps. If the waves were to come up, it's a safety concern. So let's, let's watch right now. So Jack's, Jack's out there and he's gonna say, hey, we're far enough. Oh, I guess they're, they're walking a little further. Yep, so pretty soon, Jack is gonna put in a post. And he's gonna say, I'm the pivot. So we're on a, we're on a little bit higher bar right here, obviously. And, and you know, Brett's six foot freaking seven, so. Let's give it a pull from there, Jack. Jack, that's good. Okay, see that right there? So Jack put it in his post, and he's gonna, and Brett's making the pivot. So they're not scaring fish out from them because they walked in a single file line, okay? 
So now you'll see them. And again, we're early and I'm filming this because it's light out and it's a beautiful, beautiful picture. And now they're gonna start pulling back. Now when you start pulling back, the bottom of your stick needs to ride the bottom of the sand. And it's kind of, it's very grueling because you're, you're half crunched, you're half kind of bent over. It's a CrossFit thing and then you're gonna keep going. We got a little hump right there. You can see them come up. They're gonna come over the top of that. And pretty soon they're gonna come down. You can see the top of the net has some floating devices there that keeps it up top. You're gonna keep it on the bottom. They're gonna keep pulling. And again, I, I wouldn't be surprised if we have nothing in here. It's just not, it's not late enough yet. It's kind of triggered on darkness. I see, again, I see some people out there pulling. We're just, we're not at that point yet. They're coming back. Now, as they're coming back, and again, this was kind of a practice round because this is, is this Brett's first time, right? Second. Second time, okay. So we're retraining them. But when you get to this edge right here, right off the sand, there's a little bit of a ledge there. And when you pull up at, on that ledge, you gotta keep it really tight to the ground, otherwise you can let your smelt out. And then that's where uh, Fat Guy 1 and 2 come in, and we're there, and we're gonna scoop up all the little fish. And just for, we got some eight gallon buckets over there, that's gonna be our job to scoop them up. We're losing light fast, so let's get these guys to come up here. We're close. Again, I'd, I'd be surprised if we've got anything in there. If we do, more power to it. Then we might show you the ritual, the ritual of what happens when you get your first smell. So there you go. Look at that. Spot on. He's got his bucket ready. It's about to happen. So I'm gonna back up a little bit. Again, be careful when you when you when you come up down that pole. Nice easy scoop up on the yep, good headlights. Yep, spread her out. There's a fish in there. Oh, 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 oh. All right, give her oh yeah, there we go. Nice job boys. They're out deep right now. They're out deep. Okay. There it is. Nice job, guys. We got a few boys. You want a big one? We got some. A little one. Okay. Here he goes. Right there. Here it is. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. All right. Here it is. When you bring in your first batch of smelt, this is what happens. Oh yeah! <laughs> Hell yeah! <laughs> nice job, nice job. Fish in the pail. Let's go. A lot of dirt in this one. Not as good. Okay, 1224, time to end the night. Ended up with cooler and a half full. Wasn't gangbusters, wasn't dead, so it's gonna be a good night. Tomorrow morning, I'll shoot another one of me packaging and cleaning 
a smelt. So, good night, guys. Good night. Hey, everyone. Shannon Cruz here from the Outdoor Cruise. And today is a special day. It's a very special day. Today, we're going to cover how to clean smelt. The, the run is on up in Duluth. You have to get on this. If you, if you have never went smelting before, you're on the front end of it, and you have to get on it. So once you get your harvest and you come home the next morning all tired, and it's time to start cleaning smelt. Again, I apologize. It's a little bit windy out here, but we're going to cover this real quick for you so that you can uh, get done, start cleaning your own smelt. First thing you do is you start with a newspaper. A little bit wet, keep them down there because you're going to have a lot of these to clean. I call it the two-point bush light lock right there. One bush light can on the left, one bush light can on the right, and you are locked in. You are locked tight with this newspaper right now, okay? Don't forget that, you know, that optional one off to the right in case you get thirsty because you're probably going to get thirsty. All right, next you need is a trusty flay knife because everybody knows these little buggers, they're tough. And, and again, you know, you want to... You know, you, you see them right here? Yep. You're going to want to get in there. You know, you want to get right behind the gills. Kind of like a crappie. Get right behind those gills and go straight down the belly. And, and just, you know, just bust through. Bust right through there. Take them right off the bone on that side. And on this side, you go right down the spine. Just like any other fish. It's, you know, I, you know, crappies, you take the ribs out. These you don't really have to. You can just, you know, just take it right off the backbone. You end up with this perfect little fillet here. Take out any of the eggs right there. Look at that. Look at that nice fillet right there. Oh, it's either going to be dandy. Same thing. Flip it over. Right behind the gills here. You can see that. Take it right down the backbone. You get yourself a nice even fillet there. And boom. Fillet number two. Get that in a little beer batter right there. Look at that. Look at that. I mean... You might have a couple hundred of these to do, a couple thousand. So, I mean, this this could this this probably isn't really the right way to do it at all. So, um, I don't, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just here to just here to drink the beer. Sorry for the spoof video. It worked for me. So, let's learn how to clean a smelt the real way, the quickest way. I do a smelt fry every year up at uh, our campsite at Eagle Point, and it helps to have a couple guys. So here's the here's the basics of doing a smelt. Here's your smelt right here. Here's your scissors. All you really need is that scissors and a couple guys. So what you, the first thing you want to do is you want to cut about three quarters of the way right behind the head. So you're basically cutting that spine off. Then you flip it, and you come right up here, right in the poop chute, and you cut straight up. Straight up, okay? And the reason you leave it three quarters on is that when you pull this head, and you grab right here, you pull this head, it just rips everything completely out. Nice and clean, bloodline's almost out. You can take your thumbnail if you want. Run that straight up nice and clean have a tank right there a tank a bowl a wet bowl put it in there so here's the speed way of doing it with if you're doing it for a fry I have one guy I have one guy with the scissors to the right of me I have one guy with the scissors to the left of me those two guys with scissors all they do is they pull them out they clip them three quarters and they go up the straight up that scissors never leaves their hand they hand them off to me in the center and I, and I do the ripping, the gutting, and put them in the wet bowl. So two guys with scissors can feed one guy pulling the heads off and cutting them. And we can do a couple gallons and probably, well, le less than a beer. Again, I, I appreciate you following me. We ended up last night with uh, about, I, I mean, I've probably got... Uh, eight gallons here that I'm going to distribute today. I only keep a couple gallons for myself for the fish fry that cord for myself. I gift the rest of them because there's plenty 50 plusers out there 
that love smell. So again, thanks for sticking with me on this episode. It was one of the best. Um, let me pull this two point away. Um, give you a quick. There you go. The fruits of the labor. Find a young guy to go with you. He'll, your back will your back will love it. Hey, thanks for tuning in. Sorry it took so long to get some content for you. Fishing opener's right around the corner. Fishing opener will be my season two. So stay tuned, everybody. Going to love this one. It's going to be a great summer. Take care.